So anyway, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of King of Our Nightmares, where we wrap up the 70s with the Dead Zone. Or what is it called in German? It again, it's a subtitle similar to the stand, the last stand. Uh the Dead Zone is just called Dead Zone the Assassination. Because I think the first German translation, it was just called The Assassination. Dead Zone completely gone. And then in recent years, they changed it back to just Dead Zone because they realized the assassination doesn't happen until the last 50 pages. Oh, Lord. Let's talk about the Dead Zone. Right, I, the I, dead think, zone... I think this is, this is going to be a nice one because we are we have different opinions on this one. Yeah. Do you want to sum up Dead Zone? Dead Zone, sure. It's about, you know, a regular teacher, Johnny Smith. No middle name, not anything. John Smith, regular guy, everyday man, who, after a date with a colleague, Sarah, mm -hmm. um, gets into a car accident. He falls into a coma. Right. And five years later, he wakes up. And his already existing supernatural powers, you know, have strengthened and... He becomes a, what do you call it? A psychic? Yeah, psychic and kind of a famous person in the media. Uh -huh. And then we just follow him and what he does with his new powers. And it's kind of aimless. But then we get some stuff. He helps the police. And then in the final, we get to his big moment where with his powers, he... He has a chance to, you know, a chance to change the course of history. Bad things are going to happen with this one person. And he has to come to a decision if he has to kill this person, you know, to save the world, essentially. Yes. Um, okay. This is the first time, with the stand in mind, this is the first time Stephen King bit off more than he could chew, in my opinion. This book is three things. It's a recovery story. It is a serial killer story. And it is 70s politics. Because this is a time capsule of the 70s. Um, and specifically the politics of that decade, which if you follow American politics, it's some of the most fascinating politics you get into. But this is the first time we really start to see King's political opinion. It's not as nearly as bad, like blatant and obnoxious with it as you'll get in like um, his more recent stuff, like oh god, Billy Summers, where yeah. he talks about Trump fifty times in the book. Yeah, or Sleeping Beauties. Sleeping Beauties. Oh, most of the stuff since 2016, really. Yeah, the 2010s is when he became really political. But this is a foreshadowing of it. Of course, now he claims that the Greg Stilson character is Donald Trump. It's, it's kind of a stretch. Um, but Greg Stilson's the political adversary in this. He, We know he's bad because he kicks a dog to death in, like, the first chapter of the book. Um, which is a little much. And everyone hated that. He got a lot of hate mail over that one. Um, I, my favorite parts, uh, my favorite part of this book is the recovery process of being in a coma. Hmm. I think when I read this the first time, I didn't realize what it actually takes to get out of a coma. Because, unfortunately, I saw the Steven Seagal movie, Hard to Kill, where he does, like, acupuncture on himself. And he Aikido's his way out of a coma, which is stupid. But as I saw this as a little kid, and I just assumed that that was what it was. And I read this as, like, an early teen. This was one of the first ones I read. Um, and I was like, oh, this sucks. He keeps having all these surgeries because his body's, like, basically... S stiffened so much 
So he has all these horrible scars all over his body so he can move again. Mm -hmm. Um the the Castle Rock Strangler, which is this the first time Castle Rock's been mentioned? Or Yes, has, I think it's the very first time. Okay, Castle Rock is a place that King got obsessed with, still is a little bit obsessed with, even though he killed it. That's uh, it's a fun story, yeah. So ba basically, Dead Zone is the first in the Castle Rock cycle, if you want. A bunch mm -hmm. of novels and short stories and novellas take place there. We and... may have had some of the short stories in Night Shift. Maybe one of them was in Castle Rock. I don't think so. One of them took place in the Stand Universe. Yeah, we didn't mention that, but we mentioned that in Night Shift. Yeah. Uh, when we reviewed Night Shift. But um, the, the Castle Rock Strangler is interesting, although the conclusion I don't find that satisfying. Hmm. But the political stuff, it's just hinted throughout the book, and then it becomes the main plot. And I don't think it's good. Hmm. It's something so, I think the movie did a lot better hmm. with. the Not the TV show. There was a horrible, horrible Dead Zone TV show that was a crime drama. That went for like six seasons and shouldn't have gone through one. Because they pretty much wrap up most of the plot lines of the Dead Zone book in like two episodes. And badly. Mm. And then the rest of it just sucks. But the reason it's called... We're not explaining why it's called the Dead Zone. Um, sometimes he can't remember things because he was in a coma for so long. He says it goes to the Dead Zone. So when he... He can sometimes get an imprint of something and realize that something's happened to someone or like like he can he can see the past or the present mm -hmm. by seeing something and he won't see all of it because it's gone to the dead zone. So that's why the book's called the dead zone. Um which I should mention like his visions and stuff. That's a really fun part in this. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. When, when he's like on the case for the Castle Rock killer, mm -hmm. that's horrifying. We were not, we haven't even the Castle Rock Strangler is a guy who targets window women randomly mm -hmm. and uh assaults them and murders them. Ages they, from little girls to grandmas. Yes. And when you find out who that is, which I won't spoil, we won't spoil who that is. Yeah, we have to spoil it for Cujo. We, <laughs> we have to, because there's wonky, weird shit going on in Cujo with that plotline being picked up. Is it picked up? It is picked up, and it's bizarre and interesting. I don't remember that. I don't remember a lot of Kujo except for how uncomfy it was. Yeah, I mean, King doesn't even remember writing it because he was so high. <laughs> it's a shame. It's not a bad book. Yeah. It's fairly short. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, the Greg Stilson stuff for me doesn't work. Hmm. It, there's too much going on in this book and not enough time to, to deal with it. Um, I really like the drama between Johnny and I think her name is Sarah. That's that's the the woman that he went on that date with that he loves, mm -hmm. but she she moves on. She moves on, gets married, and has kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is just utterly heartbreaking, and like one of those things uh, with being in a in a coma for so long. She didn't think he was going to ever come out of it. And his mom's a weird religious zealot. In the <laughs> style of Carrie. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of Carrie vibes. I also got a bit of Franny's mom's vibes. Or uh, it, He has a thing for overbearing mothers. Like, mm -hmm. And she's wild. And she like gives all their money away to different like religious zealots and stuff. Yeah, at one point she believes... Uh... Like, heaven is literally in space, 
in mm -hmm. some nebula and then she believes heaven is actually underground and we have to dig to get there yeah she goes off the deep end and uh it, it's just so sad to see his father just just deal with it yeah it's it's interesting johnny just has a miserable life yep. it's just sad is a very sad existence. And so when you get to the end, it, it makes sense why he does what he does. I just I just have a problem with the whole with getting to the end. Yeah, and I think that's a structure thing. Like yes. I like all the stuff with I like the setup. I mm -hmm. like Johnny as a character, his powers, the recovery, and the killer stuff. So that all works. The problem then is the final, which is supposed to be you now his ending and this great sacrifice he's going to make, changing history, essentially. Mm -hmm. Which the book tries to use like the Castle Rock killer plot as like setup for Johnny, why he wants to stop Greg Stilson. But it doesn't do it really well. come... Yeah, but it doesn't really come together. And Stilson is completely separate for most of the book and it's just we get little chapters focusing on him. And how awful he is. Yeah, yeah. And his rise to power, essentially. And we get one thing that was surprising, and I didn't remember it from my first read. Very early on, we get a chapter in some bar, and there is a guy going in who sells lightning rods. Oh, yeah. And he gets turned down, and then way later in the book, there's the scene where Johnny has a vision that this place is going to burn down, and all these young people are going to die in it. Because of, you know, yeah. didn't have a lightning rod. Uh, that was weird. I understand having set up for it, but that scene looked so out of place. And it's just um, King ripping off uh, Ray Bradbury's, you know, uh, something wicked this way comes. Yeah. Because, yeah, literally the scene, you know, the guy selling lightning rods is coming in and but it doesn't have that magical feel. It's just jarring and confusing why it's there until you get the revelation, oh, it is for set up for later. And even then it still doesn't work. Yeah, I don't... It's... Yeah, some of it just doesn't doesn't work for me, yeah. personally. Yes, Other it, things do. It, it's like he had a great idea, mm -hmm. but then the structure of it is a problem if you rework this like one final time and you move things around a bit this can be a great book as it is i still enjoy it but definitely there was room for improvement mm -hmm. yeah but i don't have a lot more to say hmm. uh, do you <sighs> Not really. Like I said, the characters are fine. You know, Sarah, Johnny, that's good. There's this one... I should be spoiled. There's a little sexual stuff going on that's a bit... Uh, that's not quite realistic, but okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, there is the appearance of this guy who works for like this trashy magazine called Inside View. Yeah, it's like a, yeah. a very fun scene because he wants to exploit Johnny essentially because he also thinks Johnny is a fraud. His entire magazine is, you know, frauds. They just sell to like dumb people and trick them. That character, I think his name is Richard Dees. Mm -hmm. He's the main character in the short story The Night Flyer. Oh, I didn't put, I know exactly what short story you're talking about. They made it into a movie. Yeah. Famously, he's the same character. He shows up again. I think the Johnny Smith stuff is even mentioned in the short story. That's funny. Yeah. Oh. I didn't put two and two together. Yeah, but that's that's an awesome connection already. It's always fun when you recognize it, especially on like uh, big rereads and you pick up on these little references and characters showing up again. What's the night flyer in? And Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Okay. It's one of two vampire stories in there. Nightflyer. Rec highly recommend. Yeah. Famously, the most famous picture from it is uh, the vampire uh, pissing. And you can't see him. You only see the urine. <laughs> yeah. 
But uh, anyway, I, I recommend this book if you like a time capsule of the seventies and you're really into like drama. It's good drama in this. Mm. Not a not a horror novel. No. Not at even all. Though the, even though there's horrific stuff in it. But like you said, yeah. drama fits uh, way more. And I would I would add fi- as a final, it's not as political as I was thinking at first. Because when I first read, I didn't remember much of it from my first read. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was, you know, looking forward to rereading it, seeing like how much politics is actually in this. And it's not a lot. I will say. Yeah, or maybe I mean, just that's... I don't pick it up as much. There's there is stuff in there, obviously. The scene you mentioned to me at one point. Uh, Johnny oh, predicting scene. Yeah, Johnny predicting oh you're gonna be president and stuff and shaking his hand. That's a little much. Yeah. It felt like the last crusade scene when Indy runs into Hitler. <laughs> Not comparing Jimmy Carter to Hitler. Not not making that comparison because I know someone's gonna pull that out of context. Not saying that it's just those two scenes are similar. Yeah. Except one is really funny and the other one is kind of like uh Yeah. But yeah, Greg okay, one final thing. Greg Stilson as the villain. Mm-hmm. We have, we have to maybe rank him a bit, like in comparison to the other King villains of the 70s. He's one of the... In some ways, he's a really good villain, but just how he's placed isn't... Hmm. isn't good. I mean, Flag's the best antagonist out of all the 70s... Yeah. ...villains. I mean, he's like one of the greatest antagonists ever. I mean, he's the antagonist... Um, there really aren't any, I mean, the protagonist of Rage is also the antagonist. Yeah. Um, and the Long Walk doesn't really have an antagonist. Hmm. Aside from the Colonel, I guess, but I mean, like, he's barely in it. <sighs> I mean, Carrie, we got her mom and, you know, the other student. The bullies, yeah. The bullies. Salem slot, we got, of course, Barlow. Barlow's great. Mm-hmm. So, see, I go, I go Flag, Barlow, because Barlow's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Greg Stilson would be third, not because he, he's probably on par with Barlow, but the way he's utilized is not that good, I think, in the book, and that's just a structural issue that I have to, I have to take into consideration. Okay. Um, the the overlook. I guess the overlook's the primary antagonist. I put that at fourth. Then all those villains are good. Mm-hmm. Putting the overlook and Jack Torrance is low. I I argue that Jack Torrance isn't the antagonist of the the Shining. He's more the protagonist he's the one that undergoes the change yeah he's the victim he's the victim the villain. Mm-hmm. um yeah yeah i would i would agree with this villain ranking all are solid um do we want to do a separate episode where we rank all the king books or do we just want to do it now I guess we can do it now. We have some time left. I mean, if you're up for it. Yeah, we'll just add it to this episode. But before it, we should quickly mention the movie adaptation of Dead Zone, which I haven't watched. Have you watched it? No, I haven't watched it yet. Didn't have the time, but... It's fine. Um, I really like Christopher Walken as Johnny. Yeah. It's by Um... David Cronenberg and (laughs) Christopher Walken. Okay, the one thing I will say... It is weird seeing a young Christopher Walken. It, it it's kind of uncanny. Yeah, he does a good job. It's a it's a bit different from the novel. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the film is fine. One of one of the few great ones because we it's are still in the seventies. Probably the least graphic Cronenberg film. 
I didn't even know it was a Cronenberg film until you told me just now. Oh. Yeah, wow. no, I didn't know this was directed by David Cronenberg. I love Cronenberg. Yeah, because I'm think because this is the 70s, and with these books, like, this is what made King famous. Not mm -hmm. just those books, but the movie adaptations by big names. Mm -hmm. Because, obviously, Carrie, Brian De Palma, mm -hmm. Salem's Lot, uh, Toby Hooper. Yeah, uh, not necessarily Kubrick, Kubrick, um, Dead Zone, Cronenberg, and then obviously the stand uh, later, but yeah, later, and and like in the same era, we also have Christine's a Carpenter film, exactly. Um, and then obviously, we get into stuff like you know, Misery, uh, Dolores, Shawshank. Shawshank, Green Mile, you know, yeah, but those early ones. The Mangler, you know. The, the Mangler, definitely. <laughs> All-time favorite. But really, I think Dead Zone is one most people know. The basic premise. Guy wakes up from coma, can see the future. Mm. It's really like, in pop culture, it's a thing. And the like, Greg Wilson stuff, especially after Trump. I mean, I think it was BuzzFeed did a video with Stephen King, which was just... Stephen King, I, I call it George Lucas smugness. Just sat there like, yeah, I predicted this. It's like when George Lucas decided at some point when he, after he sold Star Wars to Disney that Star Wars was an allegory for Vietnam. He's been on the record saying it was an allegory for World War II. I mean, we, we you gotta give Lucas a break, okay? He's he's made so many great things. He made the first movie to ever have black people on screen with yeah. red tails. So red tails. this is groundbreaking. Yeah, gotta gotta it's cut him. Strange magic, and someone watched it. Someone watched it. Did it make any money? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That's scarier than any of these books we've talked about. <laughs> Oh boy, strange magic. Oh, anyway, let's rank the '70s King stuff, the golden age of King. Can we right. say that? Oh yeah, it's definitely the golden age. Like, like I just said, that's his stuff. The most famous one, the most like ingrated into pop culture, because pretty much everyone knows like the basics of those stories, like Shining or Dead Zone or The Stand. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say is the worst one? I'm not saying it's bad, necessarily. But it okay. is the least. Okay. I have to get... First off, we have to uh, break it down again uh, by release. What what came out in the 70s. So, we had Carrie. Yeah. Give me a second. I'm looking for uh, my quick list. Put him on the spot. He didn't know we were going to do this many of them tonight. Yep. Okay, 70s. We got Carrie, 1974. 75 was Salem's Lot. Mm -hmm. 77 was The Shining. Also 77 was Rage. 78, Night Shift. And then also The Stand. Then 79, The Long Walk. And finally, The Dead Zone. Okay, so at the bottom of my list, it's Rage. Okay. And I will... Rage is a fantastic concept, but the, the teenage, like, slang talk is nonsense. And it doesn't quite work. Uh, having the protagonist be the one holding all the kids hostage is a fascinating take. Yeah, and like the usual like protagonist, mm -hmm. Ted Jones, I think he was called. Mm -hmm. Who, like in any other story, he would be the protagonist, you know, but he's the villain more or less mm -hmm. in this story. That's a fascinating concept. Yes. Um, is that where you would rank Rage? Um, I I don't think so. I think you go first, and then we go mine because mine is a little bit more controversial. I feel. 
Oh, you want me just to do my whole list? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, let's okay. do it. Okay, next, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Carrie's one half a good book and the other half a mediocre book. Hmm. Uh, and it's not broken down like the first part's good or the... Whenever it's the actual narrative, it's good. Whenever it's like talking about scientific paperwork on telekinesis and stuff, that's kind of dumb. Oh, the famous inserts. The inserts are just not that good. Um, next, I would go with The Dead Zone. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fine. Something structurally has issues, but overall it's a good story. Next, oh, these are all really good, though. Um, I'd have to go with The Shining. All right. Next. Shining. Then I go Night Shift. Mm -hmm. Night Shift's all over the place, but I do love when Stephen King writes short stories. And it has some really great ones in there. It has some incredible ones. Uh, then I go The Stand. Mm -hmm. And Salem's Lot. And then I put The Long Walk as the best of the 70s. All right. Oh, <laughs> I'm I'm actually writing it down just so I don't forget anything. Okay, my list is a bit more controversial. A little bit. All right, at the bottom of my list. Gonna hate me? The stand. I knew you were going to do that. It's too long for you. It's so much. I get it. No, I get it. Yeah. Just, I wasn't feeling it. And I know I'm in the minority on this one. Yeah. But but even still, I would uh, recommend giving it a shot if you can take a book that in the German paperback is 1,700 pages. Yeah, it's really long. It's, it's, it's a behemoth. Okay, so that's at the bottom. Then next up would be, above it would be Rage. Okay. Because I do like the premise. It's a quick read. It's definitely a depressing psychological thing. Yeah. And some of the things in it don't work, obviously, like the young people talking. Sometimes sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. He felt a little out of touch. Yeah, which is weird because he wrote this when he was young. <laughs> but yeah, that that's king. It it gets worse in his later books. Uh, you you did try to read fairy tale, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I do enjoy that book, but the main kid in it references movies from the 60s and 70s. Mm -hmm. And in the first I... half, he constantly mentions, I went to you the YouTube and I looked up tutorials and videos how to do stuff. I, I wonder if Stephen King has grandchildren. Oh, he has a bunch of them, yeah. Are they all Joes? Mostly Joes, maybe some of Owen. Yeah. Yeah, I know his daughter doesn't have any children. Mm -hmm. oh. But yeah, it's it's interesting, this era of badly written young characters compared to later when he just turned into the, you know, how do you do fellow kids meme. Well, eventually he stopped writing kids for a while. Really? What era? Because I'm struggling to think That's of it. That's like right the now. 2000s. It's like what, Black House and all that. Black House still has, like, a child as the MacGuffin, essentially. Oh, okay. Fair enough. Um, yeah. But later on, you get stuff like The Institute, which has a bunch oh, of, like... That, that's something. Like, it has 10-year-olds. It has, a, it has like, an 8-year-old girl saying, my mom told me Trump is bad. Which was... Um, I think it was the only reference to Trump, but it was so stupid and out of place. I don't believe... No, Steve. The Institute's kind of garbage. It is. It's a shame. It was a fascinating uh, premise. Yeah, until we get, you know, the resolution, like what it's all about. And I wish he would have connected it to Firestarter and the shop. 
but yeah, yeah, it's a little frustrating. Yeah. Um. What's next? Okay, uh, so bottom two, the stand, then rage, then we get to carry, which I do like. Uh, I find I find the concept with the inserts fascinating. Some of them, sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes sometimes it does, but overall it's a decent read. It's more important for its, uh, you know, histor historic importance because it's his first novel. Yeah. Uh, then we get to the dead zone. Mm -hmm. Which is fine. It's fun. It still has problems, but it's it's already more refined than like carry or rage, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, then we get night shift. Not my favorite short story collection. I have to reread them all, but it is fun. It has some of the great ones. Battleground. That one alone is worth it. Fighting yeah. the toy soldiers. Yeah. I mean, I just watched that episode of Nightmares and Dreamscapes. Which that was the pilot episode, and it's not even from the book. It's from Night Shift. It's a fun, it's a fun one. Um, mm -hmm. But you also have Lawnmower Man. Oh yeah, the, sh the short story that ins inspired the movie. <laughs> that movie's better than the the short story. That's saying something because that movie's not good. <laughs> yeah, but that short story, that's just. King on drugs, and it didn't work out. Or uh, Quitters Inc. Oh yeah, that's a solid one. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem's Lot, which leads me to my top three, actually. Yeah. Number three is Salem's Lot. Okay. Obviously, I like it. Not too big into vampires, but this one is just fun. The atmosphere of the small town, all the townspeople, you know. Mm -hmm. First time with a writer as the main character. Yeah, yeah, it true. works. It works. It's fun. Then we get number two, The Shining. Okay, yeah. Just solid, solid characters, supernatural stuff. It's great. Highly recommend. And then number one, like I said, it's got to be The Long Walk. Oh, yeah. And that was the one I don't think I, I had read before recording this. Hmm. It was the one that surprised me the most. Yeah, the Bachman books, just damn fine stuff. It might be the best Bachman book. I'm trying to remember what um, if I've read Roadwork. Oh, Roadwork, I was going to say, that's going to be interesting, because that doesn't have any supernatural, it's more slice of life, and that one is depressing, even among the Bachman books, because it's really just a man breaking down and losing his mind. Isn't it referenced in Wolves of the Kala? Kind of. It's not directly referenced, but in Roadwork, there seems to be set up for Callahan and his further adventures, which is insane. And it's not just a crazy fan theory. Like, I'm convinced King already had something planned because the character in Roadwork is not said to be Callahan, but he's identical in every way. You gotta see it when we get to it, but I'm looking forward to that. So, anyway, that's that's the end of the season. Season that took two years, but we did it with a great, epic final four in one, three reviews and a ranking. Yeah, I'll just throw the ranking though on the uh, the dead zone. I think. All right. Because the that episode was pretty short. I had a feeling we could do it. I had a feeling we could record all these at once because two of them would be fairly short. Yeah. Um. So anyway, that was season one. We'll return in a few months to. I'm not sure what we're gonna tackle next. Is it Firestarter? Oh, and next up, Firestarter, and then Roadwork. Oh, and okay. then the third one, Dance Macabre. Oh, and with I want to clarify this. Because I read both versions of The Stand. I will do the same with Dark Tower the Gunslinger. I will same. not do that with Dance Macabre. Because Dance Macabre has been rewritten so many times. I'm just going to go with the current version of it, which was made in 2010. Mm -hmm. So, uh, not a lot changes. Isn't it, Did he change the actual text? Because I, f I think he just mostly added like four words and stuff. 
because I remember reading that book and it has like 10 forwards. Yeah, because every time one. he would just add things because it's With, nonfiction. I it's remember his first reading nonfiction. Yeah, and I remember I remember reading his 2010 forward, the latest one. Mm -hmm. uh, he mentions, oh, he's looking forward to watching Zombieland. So was I in 2010. But anyway, that's all. Have a good one.